Hi guys, welcome back to George Reads once again, where today we are reading Chapter 5 of Slime by David Williams. Last time in Chapter 2, we were introduced to Ned's little sister, Jemima, and we learned that Jemima likes to play pranks on her older brother, <coughs> and she doesn't sound like a, uh, quite a nice girl. So this is the chapter on from that, Chapter 3. Um, if you guys haven't seen any videos by me, I suggest you go check them out. And if you haven't seen any videos on the slime, um, then don't worry. I'll um, I will inform you on everything that's happening in these videos. Um, so yeah, this is chapter three, and I hope you guys enjoy. And let's roll on with it. Chapter three, gunk. Jemima was a child who reveled in all things yucky, not just spiders and worms, but gooey things too. All around the little cottage where the family lived, the girl had hidden gunk in jars. Things you found under rocks. Things you found at the bottom of ponds. Things you found lurking down the plug hole. Jemima would scoop up anything nasty and deposit it in a jar. Over time, she had collected hundreds and hundreds of jars of all different kinds of junk. Every single one had the label on it, so Jemima would remember what was what. One shudders to think how the girl collected some of these revolting things. You would not want to touch this stuff with your bare hands. Badger snot, slippery sludge, rainy dribble, frog spawn, snail trail, jellyfish, foot cheese, toenail grot, pigeon poop, ron eggs, old man's phlegm. Underarm sweat, off custard, fur balls, stinging nettle juice, gerbil wee, that weird yellow stuff that ladybirds leave on your finger, liquidized worms, earwax, wet bottom burps, belly button fluff, very mouldy mould, spider sick, crushed caterpillars, slug juice, bat eggs. Something unspeakable that cannot be named. At the bottom of every wardrobe, at the back of every cupboard, under the floorboards there were jars and jars and more jars. Jemima was stockpiling them in the family cottage, and she wanted to play the most humongous trick on her little brother. A trick that would make him scream the house down. Ah! A scream that would echo all over the Isle of Mulch forever. Jemima would snigger to herself, uh, thinking about her devilish plan. There was just one problem. Her little brother was onto her. Ned found the jars. Just one jar at first. In a deep sleep, Ned had rolled off his bed in the dead of night. Fud! Ouch! The fool woke him up. Just as he was about to haul himself back up, Ned noticed something glinting in the darkness under his bed. He reached out and found it was a jar. The label, in his sister's scrawled handwriting, read simply, Bogies. On closer inspection, he discovered it really was a jar bursting with bogies. They looked very much like Jemima's. She had picked, licked and flicked so many at Ned over the years, that he could recognise them in any line-up in an instant. Hers was always a brownish shade of green. At once, Ned knew his wicked sister was up to something. But why had she hidden her own bogies in a jar under his bed? Lifting up the sheets, he saw that this was just one of what must have been a hundred jars under there, each containing something more disgusting than the last. Ned's eyes bulged as he read the labels. Ground ants, boiled dandruff, yellow pus, brown pus, yellowy brown pus, browny yellow pus, slobber, cheesy burps, sludge found down the plug hole after a bath, meaty burps, spicy burps, burpy burps, toe juice, monkey sweat, wart, wart soup, a ten-year-old trifle that has gone fizzy so it will blow your head off. Puddle, gunge, or punge. This is the correct word. 
If in any doubt, please check your Williams Dictionary, the best source of made-up words in the world. Something even more unspeakable than the other unspeakable thing that cannot ever be named. One by one, Ned pulled all the jars out from under his bed. He was careful not to clunk them together. The sound would wake up his wicked sister, who was sleeping in her room next door. Then, Ned hoisted him up onto his old battered wheelchair so he could go hunting for more jars. One good thing about getting around on wheels is that you could glide silently and undetected, as long as you don't bump into the furniture, or on ever a cat. Ned rolled past his sister's bedroom and headed into the living room. Now, thought Ned, where would be good hiding places? It turned out, everywhere! There were jar- <coughs> Sorry. There were jars and jars and more jars of yucktastic, don't delay, by a Williams Dictionary today, stuff hidden all over the room. Under the sofa, behind the curtains, on top of the bookshelf, the sideboard, under the cushions, behind the plant pot, under the coffee table, inside the lampshade. The same was true of the kitchen and the hallway. Rolling past the boiler cupboard, Ned heard gurgling. Opening the, on opening the door, he could see jars and jars with gunk oozing out of them. The heat from the boiler must have made the gunk expand. It was a wonder that one of the jars hadn't exploded. Once again, all the jars were labelled, each full of something more puzzling than the last. What was all this stuff? Plume? Spludge? Grunge? Fugal? Winkadink? Muppety? Hunna, 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 hunna? Fonk? Boo Boo, Noodle, Wally Bumps, Dunty Pot, Snud, Miggle, Piffle Paffle, Zonty Monty Woo Wah, Plut Plut, Bim Bam Booble. And more importantly, what was she planning to do with it all? The boy approached his mother and father's room. He peeked through the gap in the door. Their bed was empty. It was the early hours of the morning, and the pair were already at work. No doubt Dad was heading out to sea and Mum was setting up our market stall. A quick search by Ned of the back of the wardrobe revealed jars, jars and more jars. Curious and curiouser, he muttered to himself. Then the boy rolled back into the hall, making his way towards his dreaded sister's bedroom. Ned was sure somewhere in there would be the answer. He put his ear up against her door. Jemima was fast asleep, snoring like a steam train. The sun in her bedroom said, Entry strictly forbidden. Any unauthorised persons who go beyond this point will get a boot up the bow. Now was Ned Chance. The boy took a deep breath, and as quietly as he could, he opened the door and gently rolled himself inside. The boy hadn't been allowed in his sister's bedroom for years. No wonder she kept everyone out. Her room was full to bursting with jars and jars and more jars of gunk. There must have been thousands upon thousands of jars in there, all the way from the ceiling to the floor, from the floor to the ceiling. No wonder Jemima had resorted to hiding the jars all over the house. There was no more room in her bedroom. It was a miracle she could even get out. As Ned watched his sister sleep, Nothing noting that she wore her steel-capped boots in bed, he scanned her bedroom for clues. There must be an answer to somewhere to what she planned to do with all these jars of gunk. In the corner of the room were Jemima's school exercise books. Ned knew that her sister never did a scrap of work at school, so I was surprised to see how well thumbed the books look. Upon opening them, Ned discovered that they weren't full of schoolwork at all. Oh no. They were full of diabolical tricks he she was about to play on him. And that's the end of chapter three. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. And it seems like the mystery is getting stranger and stranger. What is Jemima planning to play on her little brother? Well, we will find out in tomorrow's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and goodbye.